The term salvation encompasses the total work of God by which he seemed to rescue man from the ruin. You need to know that man on his own is born a sinner. Salvation is saving of a soul from sin and its consequences because why? Sin has got consequences. I can tell you comfortably so that in the state where you are spiritually you cannot move one bit forward that's why right now the enemy is in a state of stripping you naked he's taking everything even the thing you sweated for is going actually what is remaining right now is only you and the name we can retain your life and we can collect it back Say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Help her. 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 So high, Mountains, oh. valleys so low, valleys, oh. hey. none can compare to you. None can compare to you. Mountains so high, Mountains, oh. valleys so low. Shalom, Bishop Alex is my name. What a joy for me to bring this message on deliverance. Deliverance is a very important aspect and very important message for every believer and unbeliever to understand. I know we are living in the world where deliverance has been mispreached and misrepresented. A lot of you think deliverance is for people who are possessed, but I came to discover that spirits are in different categories we've got wicked spirits we've got demonic spirits we've got unclean spirits and also deliverance comes in different ways there are people who are oppressed there are people who are possessed and there are people who are suppressed you may be in one of the three categories you may need deliverance and here is the thing i want to say to you deliverance is not for heaven deliverance is to give you power to have dominion over the earth you may be oppressed suppressed or uh, possessed you may need deliverance and as I'll be teaching today I want you to follow me because God is about to give you answers to the questions you have had as to why things don't work in your lives join me in this series which I call deliverance 101 and your life will never be the same Shalom Praise the Lord. Glory to God. This is Bishop Alex. I'm just enjoying so much the journey of salvation and the journey of deliverance. On this particular journey, I'm speaking on deliverance, which I started last week. And you that followed me, I've been showing you from our father, Abraham, how he struggled with certain things he needed to break in his life. I showed you the three challenges he had. Today, I'm going to deal with the fourth one. I said, number one, there was a trace of lies in his lineage number two there was a limitation of children in his lineage in his lineage and number three there was also a challenge of barrenness that kids were not born at a time when they were needed and today and i want to deal with the, the fourth one the fourth one is the loss of birthright all the sons of abram and great sons they lost their birthright now this is what i'm going to show you in the bible the Bible is very clear and tells us that when Abram waited for Isaac to be born, he got tired on the way and Sarah and him agreed that they must use a, a, a maid, Hagar, to sleep with her so that he could get a child, which God in return rejected and the son was called Ishmael. Ishmael therefore became the firstborn of Abraham. 
all right? But God did not accept him. Then the second born also was Isaac. So he had two children. Now, you look at this. Isaac is the one who took the inheritance of the father. The first born son, who was Ishmael, could not get the inheritance of the father. And that became a foundation for all the siblings that were going to be born. The first borns were challenged. I want you to follow me. That when we talk about deliverance, we are breaking the cycle and the common denominator that runs through our bloodline in our family. A lot of you are born again, but you wonder why all of you are just going through the same routine and you don't know why things are not changing. I'm here to help you because God has called me in the ministry of deliverance. Now, here's the thing. Abraham, the Bible says, Ishmael never received the inheritance. So, Isaac received the inheritance as, as a second born. Isaac had two children. And the two children were who? They were Esau and Jacob. Esau was the first born. It was Jacob who took the blessing from the father. Esau never took a blessing. So, the first born lost the inheritance to the second born. When you go down, you are also going to discover something in the Bible, child of God, that Jacob also, with his two sons, Reuben was the firstborn, but Reuben never amounted to become a leader or a king. It was Joseph who became the leader. It was the last born who became the leader. Now, when you look at that, there was a loss of inheritances in Abrahamic family. Why? Because the thing started with him. Now, what am I trying to say to you? I want you to know that when we talk about a generational curse, it's called generational because it moves from one generation to another and it also moves within the bloodline. The first thing you need to understand, you must have a revelation, a revelation of what is binding you in the family. Then you must have a revelation of Christ that is the only redeemer and is the only deliverer. I have done counseling to thousands and thousands of people who come to see me one on one. And I came to discover that a lot of people that we talk to, they come from homes where there are altars and voices that testify against them. They are born in families where divorce is inevitable. They are born in families where poverty is inevitable. They are born in families where a, a, a demotion is inevitable. Having of money is strange in those families. No matter how hard a person works, it nothing may come up. Why? Because you look at Abraham. Abraham was already delivered by God, but he struggled to have a child. You look at Isaac. Isaac never lived in the land of Ar where they were worshiping idols, but because he was born out of the loins of Abraham, who had a foundation that was linked to idol worship before God got him out. The guy had the challenge also of delayed kids and it went to his children also. Uh, uh, Jacob had the same issue. Now, this is one of the interesting ones that I want you to note that is very mind-blowing. I read the Bible in Genesis 49 verse number 4 and I discovered that Jacob was blessing his children and he came to a particular son and this is what he said. He said to, to, to Levi and Simeon, he said, Levi and Simeon are brothers, but cruelty or anger shall be there in habitation. Now, when you go to, to Exodus chapter number two, you're going to find a story. The Bible says, and there came a man out of the house of Levi who found a daughter from the tribe of Levi. And the daughter conceived, and the wife conceived, and gave birth to a son who was hid in the river. And the Bible is talking about Moses. Now, Moses is linked to Levi in Genesis 49, who the father said, cruelty or anger shall be his habitation. You look at Moses. Moses now is discovered in the Nile and when he's discovered in the Nile he's taken into the palace and the mother is taking care of him and Moses realizes by the teaching of the mother that he's not an Egyptian he's an Hebrew child so why is there God is preparing him to raise him as what as a deliverer but something touches me child of God one time he saw an Egyptian and a Hebrew man fighting because of what was embedded in him According to Genesis 49 verse number 4, that cruelty shall be his inhabitant. He did not separate the Egyptian 
and the Hebrew person that were fighting. He actually killed the Egyptian with his own hands. And the Israelites and the Egyptians, they rose against him and they said, who made you our deliverer? And he ran for his life into media. He ran for, for his life into the wilderness where he spent 40 years before God appeared to him to bring him back to challenge Pharaoh to take the children of Israel out. But look at this. God appeared to Moses in a flame of fire, in a burning bush. And he went to challenge Pharaoh and he saw the power of the living God and he put over 600,000 men out of the land of Egypt, heading into Canaan. When he arrived at a place called Red Sea, he used his rod and the Red Sea opened and they walked on a dry ground. He's a man that performed miracles. But I want to show you what was spoken to his grandfather in Genesis 49, it had an impact on the father and the mother who came from the tribe of Levi. And the Moses, child of God, because of the cruelty, the anger. Another version said anger, short-temperedness, that was on him. That's why you find this guy, when he went into prayer, the Bible says he prayed and fasted for 40 days. That when he came down, the face was shining. And immediately was coming down the, 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 the mountain, he discovered children of Israel are worshipping other gods. He got so angry and he got the tablets, the commandments of God, he broke them. He could, he could not control himself. And when he realized he had broken the tablets that he received from prayer, he decided to go back to pray for another 40 days. Which means Moses prayed for 80 days prayer and fasting. And he came down. When he came down, this man, though he prayed in that way, he heard the voice of God, he saw the power of God. The curse that was on him is what stopped Moses not to enter the promised land. How do I know that? They walked in the wilderness. They reached at a place where the children of Israel cried for thirsty. They were looking for water. And he, he cried out to God and God gave him a revelation to say, speak to the, sorry, hit the rock. With the rod that you have and water will gush out. He did that and water gushed out. And the next time the children of Israel pressurized him that they were thirsty, they wanted the water. He did not inquire from God because he was running out of patience. Remember this man is fighting with his temper. He decided to hit the rock again with a stick. Water came out but God was angry because he did not need to hit the rock. He needed to speak to the rock. He never had instructions from God. He depended on the priest previous experience. That's why it's a very, very dangerous child of God. You ministers and pastors that are listening to me right now, never depend on your yesterday's miracle and the yesterday's method. And don't make the method of yesterday to become a doctrine. And you see, because he did that out of anger because the children of Israel, they put a lot of pressure on him. The Bible says God took him to the mountain and he said, because of what you have done, I am going to show you the promised land, but you shall not enter it thereof. Why didn't Moses enter the promised Land. The issue began from Genesis 49 when Jacob revealed the challenge of Simeon and Levi. And Exodus chapter number 2 reveals to us how Levi, who was the son of um, a, a Jacob, had a challenge in him of cruelty or anger. And that anger came on the grand child, and that was Moses in Exodus 2. And because the thing was not broken in him, it doesn't matter how much he prayed. There was a thing that was following him. He misbehaved time and again. He misbehaved with anger. He misbehaved with short-temperedness. You may find there is a spirit of oppression over you. That say you cannot amount to what God wants you to be. And I'm here to let somebody know, you can be in the house of God, serving God, seeing miracles and praying and sowing and seeding and tithing and praying in tongues and fasting and doing everything. But this matter is a matter of deliverance. You and I, we need to look in it and first of all, identify what am I getting delivered from? Identify what is this common denominator in our family that is bringing us down or that is holding us. I had to identify what was a common denominator in our family. In our family, there was a spirit of poverty. We struggled financially. It doesn't matter where educated you are. It was difficult for our hands to hold money. Until I realized I needed the blood of Jesus to help me. The challenge that we have today is that a lot of you refuse you are under a curse. Some of you say God's time is a 
best. How can you talk about God's time? When you are already reaching 45, you're not married. And you're saying God's time is the best. You know you must be having family. You can't sit here and say God's time is the best. When you cannot have a house of your own. And you're about 50 years old. And you say God's time is the best. You have been delayed in one way or the other. I come to talk to somebody right now. That whatever foundation, order and power in your family. That has been holding you in one place. As a deliverance specialist. I want to help you on this journey and give you what we call the supersonic speed on your feet and give you favor into your hands so that you may be able to move at the rate God wants you to move. The reason why some of you, when you prosper or money comes, something comes to swallow the money because there is an order that says that money must not be saved. But as you have been listening to me on this sermon, I prophesy in the name of Jesus that God is about to settle the matters in your family and in your life. He's about to break that yoke and is about to break the order, order in your family and God is about to give you a new order that is going to bring new order in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You can't sit there and you have a desire to be married and somebody has held your marriage. You can't be there, you want a job, you are educated, you are a graduate and you cannot find a job. How will you sit there that every man you marry divorces you? How would you sit there that every woman you marry divorces you? The devil is a liar. I come to prophesy any voice that is speaking against you today by the anointing of God. It must be broken in Jesus' name. Listen to me. Don't sit there and continue drinking water and time of ropes and going to nations looking for deliverance. Deliverance is right here. What you need to understand, understand what binds you. Understand the power of your father's house and your mother's house. Understand the common denominator in your family that is binding everyone. Is it divorce? Is it anti-marriage spirit? Is it premature death? Is it lack of finances, lack of promotion? Is it unhealthiness? What is it that is binding you? Is it barrenness? Are you failing to be joyful when you get married? Are you failing to be promoted when you work hard? Are you failing to produce in whatever that you are putting your effort into? I hear the Lord is telling me that today is the day which he has made you and I shall be glad in it. But number one, here is the question. What has bound you? Is it anti-marriage spirit? What has bound you? You don't need to go drink water and do all these things people are doing. A lot of people that do deliverance, they don't do it in the right way. Number one, they want to charge you money for deliverance. Deliverance is what Christ did for you on the cross of Calvary. All you need is to get the knowledge. That's why the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. They don't perish because of Satan. They don't perish because they are prayerless. They perish because they lack knowledge. They don't even know what to bind them, but they are going for their own deliverance. They go to places they think it's, it's something you cannot pay for deliverance. You can't buy deliverance. I do one-on-one -on -one every Tuesday here in Neon Spread in Bombella. And you don't have to pay anything. Why? Because Christ paid a price on the cross of Calvary already. All you need to know is to acquire knowledge, get a revelation. Some of you who fail to understand what is binding you, that's why the prophetic comes in. Sometimes God will use me to open my eyes and I will see what has bound you prophetically and help you to come out of it. Some of you have seen it by the fruits it has born. If you are in the family and you are seven daughters and no one is married, already it's a common denominator that, that, that there is an anti-marriage spirit. If your sons, you are graduated and no one is working, it's already a sign that something is wrong. If you are the only one who is a breadwinner, everyone is a failure. You need to know the family is bound. If you are working and not being promoted, you must know something is wrong. So you need to understand that all these things need to be broken by the power of the living God. And how do we break that it's when you realize and you agree that i know there is a common denominator it's a generational thing that is working in our lives and i stand here to declare by the anointing of god that every spirit that refuses marriages must be broken and every spirit that promotes divorces and every children being born out of wedlock, it must come to an end. Barrenness must be broken. Polygamy by the anointing of God. Joblessness in the mighty name of Jesus. Anti-progress spirit. The progress that said no to businesses and the one that said no to promotion by the anointing of God and that spirit that promotes accidents in your family that people die by accident. Every mysterious loss of your belongings. And I pray against every premature death. And I call 
command that every project you begin shall be completed. There are people that start things and they don't complete them. Why? Because the enemy has come to disturb and to destroy everything you have worked for. But listen to me. Even the spirit of insanity. In every generation, somebody is insane. Somebody loses their mind. They get educated, they lose their mind. When they're about to become medical doctors, something goes wrong. And I come to speak against every spirit of addiction. That makes people are important to become addicts to bad behaviors, alcohol, marijuana, zoo, all these things. I come to destroy that and every inherent disease, HIV and AIDS, cancer, uh, tuberculosis and all this high blood pressure and all chronic uh, diseases that come on you as a result of uh, something promoting premature death. I come to destroy it by the anointing of God. I want you to know that if people die by accidents continuously, by bullet or by daggers and everyone get divorced and people die at a certain age, you must know there is something that is fighting you. You need to seek deliverance. If you haven't found anyone we are right here in the city of Mbombela and I'm prepared to help you. Look at me and understand. I, what I'm teaching you is something I experienced. I did ministry for 12 years and it was the hardest time in my life. I was praying so hard like everybody else. I was giving like everyone else. I was fasting like everyone else. But the more I tried, the more things became worse and nothing was getting together. Until I realized I come from a background where money says no. Money does not come into our hands. And I said, Lord, I need deliverance. And I started to pray to the Lord to address the altar of our family. And I started to clean the blood and I said let the DNA of Jesus start to enter into my blood because I want to live what we call a covenant life. Child of God, you might be seated there and say Bishop I've heard you very well and I need help. Number one, you can never be delivered unless you are born again. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. You need to pray prayer after me. You just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Today I decide to follow you and I decide to surrender my life to you. Forgive my sins, write my name in the book of life. From today, I am a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you are entitled. You are entitled for deliverance. Now, sit back and look at your family tree and check what is it that is oppressing you in your family. What is the common denominator? And that is going to tell you what is fighting you and that what is chasing you. You can come, you can call me. Numbers are appearing on the screen. You can come to our one-on-one -on -one services in Nelspret in Mbombela. Come, I'll pray with you and help you go through deliverance. It's only a delivered person who has hope for tomorrow. A person that is not delivered is bound to lose everything they have gathered. And those who are delivered, even if they have nothing, they are bound to rise up and become what God wants them to be. Listen to me, child of God. This is your friend, Bishop Alex. I'll be waiting for your call. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you and I want to pray with you. Deliverance, it is imperative. It's your spirit that changes, not your soul and your body. Your soul and your body, we have got to address it. So, give me a call and I'll be waiting for you. Or alternatively, come and fellowship with us at number 12, Samora Michel in the city of Neospret, now renamed Mbombela. God bless you. Shalom. To all our viewers at home, thank you for tuning in. If you'd like a copy of the sermon or you'd like to fellowship with us, please find us at number 12 Samora Marshall Street in the city of Mbombela. For more information, please use the numbers on the screen and please tune in again next week.